Let's talk about the career of Jeff Hardy, and this isn't a Jeff Hardy hate video. Generally going to talk about, you know, the big missed opportunities of his career. Jeff Hardy has really been his biggest downfall through his career, you know. In WWE, he had great success. 03, he left the company because he was dealing with some substance issues and had to get his, you know, mind straight and everything with the TNA for a little bit. He came back to WWE in 2006, and when he came back to WWE in 06, he was like a rock star for real. You know, he won the IC title a couple of times, but then, you know, his issues always really got in the way when he was getting like those big moments you know if y'all remember you know Jeff Hardy was originally going to be in that money in the bank at Wrestlemania that year and was supposed to win the money in the bank at Wrestlemania that year but then he got in trouble and had to drop the Intercontinental Championship to Chris Jericho and then got suspended and missed that Wrestlemania. But you know, he dusted himself off, came back in 08, and bro, in 2008, Jeff Hardy's peak was crazy, man. You talk about rock star like reactions, that just excelled with the type of reactions he was getting, bro. He was so popular in 2008, bro, they were saying that Jeff Hardy was bigger than Obama in 08. That's how popular he was. Wins the WWE Championship in December of 08, finally gets that big moment after chasing the WWE Championship for months and months, finally achieves the ultimate goal. But he didn't hold the world title for long. He dropped it at the Royal Rumble to Edge, and I partially, and I don't know for sure, but I partially believe they did that because I don't think Vince really ever trusted Jeff to be a world champion for his company. I think he did it for the moment for the fans because Jeff was so over, and that's what the fans wanted, so Vince was kind of like, all right, I'll give you guys this, but it ain't going to be too long. 2009, Jeff Hardy was still popular and still super over and had, you know, a run as the world champion, but even that didn't last long. You know, that lasted about a month as well, and then he dropped it to CM Punk, and then he left the company after SummerSlam. You know, they had that steel cage match where Punk won, and Jeff Hardy was forced to leave WWE, and, you know, it was probably because he had some issues that he had to go fix and stuff like that and get his mind better. And, you know, that WWE schedule was crazy, too, so he probably wanted to heal up his body and just mentally get to a better place. But then he went to TNA, and from... I would say about 2011 to, you could say 2013, Jeff Hardy was the face of TNA to me. He, he was the guy. The guy that they were, you know, literally putting in that position like, hey, Jeff, you're that dude, it's yours. And was having phenomenal matches with plenty of superstars. I think that 2010 to 2013 run was Jeff's, like, best of his career. Like, that was peak Jeff Hardy for me. His matches were on point. Like, he was just so popular. And, like, even though TNA's audience wasn't as big as WWE, if you were watching TNA on that time frame, you know how big Jeff Hardy really was. Once again, you know, Jeff had some issues. You know, we all know that infamous match against Sting where he was under some substance and literally wrestled a match where he was, like, really messed up, which the match didn't go as planned because he couldn't perform. And that's always followed Jeff. It'll continue to follow him through the rest of his life, you know, like, that really criticized a lot of people, how they kind of view Jeff Hardy. Like, Jeff Hardy's loyal fans will always be his loyal fans no matter what, right? But I think a lot of people really kind of, I think we're just disappointed, like, damn, Jeff, like going out there and performing like that like that that's just unprofessional but he always manages you know to get himself right and come back and just seem like he's you know doing a lot better then he went to you know wwe again and had a little run there and then got let go by the company again for reasons that were rumored around the internet but nobody really really honestly knows because it hasn't really been publicly spoken about at least i haven't seen it then he goes to AEW, and it seems like you know him and matt are going to get a little push with the tag titles and then jeff you know got in trouble again and that got messed up you know jeff hardy's career reminds me a little bit of josh gordon if you watch the nfl josh gordon was a really really good receiver and 2013 had a breakout year where he led the nfl in receiving yards like it looked like josh gordon was going to be a monster receiver in the nfl for some years to come but because of his substance abuse and because of the issues he was having, he was always getting in his way and he was always getting suspended and just kept getting in trouble. Like, he got so many opportunities. Like, Jeff has had so many opportunities and every time it seemed like things were going great and then they just always, you know, just fumbled it, man. And it's just always sad when you see great talent like that just not able to overcome their issues, man. Like, Jeff Hardy has always been a unique, special, you know, type of superstar. High flying, wrist taking, paint his face, like has a connection with the audience that only his fans can really explain how they make him feel. But he always just found ways to just really kind of mess things up for him when it seemed like things were really, really going up for him. Jeff Hardy at the end of the day is still a legend, one of the best of all time. Like he'll be in the Hall of Fame and stuff, but he'll always have that, you know, dark cloud asterisk over his career. And I think a lot of people will always wonder, like, man. What could have really been for Jeff Hardy of things that could have been better for him, you know, mentally and health wise, like what really could he have reached? Like what peak could he have really gone to? Because the peak, like I said, that he reached in WWE and TNA at his popularity was really, really high. But he could have went so, so much higher, man, if things had gone a lot better for him.